Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make a spine. So many people have asked uh, me about how I make my spines and I do show them in the other videos, but I thought I'd do a specific video on how I do a spine, but also to show off one of my favorite new tools from Cool Cats Crafts. So these are our three eighth hinge stack guides and these are my go-to now for three eighths of an inch gussets on my spines now i've always shied away from a three eighth gusset on my videos just because the measurements are kind of awkward and more specific because we're going into um eighths rather than just quarter of an inch and half an inch but when you want the gap between your pages to be a little bit more than a quarter of an inch, but half an inch is just too much of a gap between, your three eighths is brilliant. And so I thought I'd show you, I've got an album here, completely made up, ready to assemble. So that's what I'm gonna do in this video. So let's have a look at what we've got here. I've got some pages. Are my pages, are seven and three quarter squares. So seven and three quarters tall. So that's a really important measurement because that's how tall you're going to make your spine. So I've cut some cardstock here, which are just short of seven and three quarter inches. And when I say just short, I mean a little tiny hair's breadth. So on my trim, I went to seven and three quarters and then just came back not even a sixteenth, just a little tiny bit. That means it's just slightly smaller than my page, which means I'll be able to slot it on correctly. If it was exactly the same size, side, or oh, size, sorry, it would touch here and here and make it trickier to get on. But I do show you a way later on how to do it. And it isn't a problem. But if you just do that little tip, it'll help you later on. So as you can see, I'm going for four pages, which means I need two strips because they're going to come up. So this will hold two pages. This will hold two pages. But in the toolkit, you do have an extra one, which you, means you can have six pages. You can use this to make a six page album as well. So let's have a look at what we've got in this little handy tool. So it comes in three parts. Now you don't get the hook. This is how I attach my um, tools to my um, storage box. Um, I can't remember what it's called. My whiz. My on-the-go whiz. Also from Cool Cats Crafts, which I keep all my tools in. And I spin it round and grab my tools. And then I just use one of my Graphic 45 tag um, bronze hooks just to attach them, keep them together. So let's have a look at what we've got. So it comes in, as I said, it comes in three parts. So let me put some black tape so you can see them maybe a bit better. Are we better on? Ah, no, we're back today. So we've got two pieces of acrylic and this thin sheet as well, which you'll see in a second why we've got that. So what do we have? We have a piece of acrylic, oh, it's upside down. I need to scratch it comes with um, some tape. So just take that all off. And you can see it says, Cool Cats Crafts 3 8 Hinge Stack Guide. Oh, it's upside down with me. Hinge Stack Guide. And what we have are measurements etched in. So you can see two and five eighths there and little slots. Now those little slots are our guides for scoring. So it's really, really simple, but really, really clever. So I'll see this one will be for the central two pages. So that's where you start off. And if you want to add two more pages, you go onto that one. And if you want two more pages, you go on to the widest one. And then in Cool Crafts, uh, tradition there's nothing wasted so here you've got 
um, a way to make your tag toppers. So you can just put it on the corner and snip off, flip it over so you can make your tag shapes. But you can also use it if you want to be really specific in a different way, which I'll show you hopefully later on. So as I said, the height of these were seven and three quarters and just slightly shorter. But how did I know what width to do? Well, we'll start with the smallest one. On this one, it says to cut my cardstock at one, it's going to focus in one and seven eighths. So this one is one and seven eighths. So what we do, if I put this here, my um, cardstock is going to, oh, actually, I can't actually get my tool, but some tools don't fit in. So what you get is this little piece. So it raises it up and you can slide this then underneath to get your tool in. And that's all you do. You don't have to measure anything. You just score down. You place your tool into that little press it and you bring it down so that's my one and seven eighth one and then i've got this wider one just keep that there put that there and i'm going to move up to my two and five eighths one so you can see this two and i've cut this at two and five eighths and i just place that there and score down those four channels. So nothing to work out or anything. It tells me what to cut my um, cardstock. It takes me exactly to the two channels I need. Oh, and I was going to show you an extra tip. So if I bring this one back in, if you want to be really oh sorry on this one on the wider one you can use that third one just to mark flip it over use the one two three mark and just give a little mark flip it over and do the same here I'll flip it up you can use that just to make a little guide to put your center one smack bang in the middle so it's just going to show up but that's all i did was a little slight mark so it's not a full length score line so a nice simple idea but so clever and just takes all the thinking out of a three eighth of an inch spine so now we've got these wider bits on the side and I'm going to place my tape down the center. So when you're doing this with your spine, do not go into the channel. So I've got this half an inch here. There's where my score line is, but my tape is away from that score line. And the same on this one. So that is the taping and what I'm going to do now is take my scissors and I'm going to cut a notch out like this. So this is where I was saying if you haven't cut your spine a little bit smaller, it doesn't matter because these channels are where you slide your pages onto. And by not having a straight line, it'll just slide over this and slide onto your hinge rather than you trying to squeeze it on. And you can do the same on the other side. There we go. So that's the base one. This will be the central ones. So I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to... Place my tape in that half inch. I'm 
and cut the triangles away just up to that score line. And now I'm going to fold. So I'm going to fold all of them upwards, the two cent sorry, the two central ones upwards. And then I bring in my Teflon tool. So all the tools, this, the extra thick pencil, all Cool Cats Crafts tools. Now they don't pay me to um, tell you about them, but I really honestly do use their tools. So we've got our U shape, but we've also got the extra score line here, which we're gonna fold backwards, kind of like some wings. Let's just get that score line done. And the same on this one. Now these half, uh, flaps here, we will actually need to train in both directions because these are our flexi part of our hinge, which will help our page to lie flat. So if you look at what sort of shape we've got, it's, there's the center. We've got these two little um, extending bits and then our two wings, which our pages go on. And that will is what allows our page to move back and forwards. So there's one. Let's see if we can get the other one done a bit faster. So again, the two central ones, I'm going to fold upwards. And then the other two. And there we go. So we've got the two bits coming up and then we're going to train the cardstock to go in both directions to make it a bit more flexible. So again, we've got that shape just with a wider base. And the idea is we put the smaller one in the middle of the larger one. So we've got those little guides, which I did put in, but you can also do it just by eye. I think for the sake of just a couple of seconds, a couple of extra little score lines, getting it smack bang just adds a little bit more uh, professionalism and finishes off your album. And then I've got the tape, which will hold it down for now. But I also add glue just for more permanent strength. So you can smear it around. So you don't need too much. Then what I do, I fold them up just so that I've got a little handle so I can just see the base. And what I can do then, I can line that base inside those two score lines and do the same on this side. There we go. And then press down. And that is your hinge done. Now, of course, if you wanted to add two more pages, you would just do exactly the same with this three and three eighth inch piece. And you would have a third one there. So I've, that's our hinge pieces. So on the back, I'm going to add tape. So I'm just going up to that score line again. And I will be using glue for sure on this bit because it's going to go 
onto the album. And this is what all the pages will be sticking onto. So I want to make sure it's well adhered. So I wouldn't use just tape or red line tape. Now I'm using uh, the Cool Cat Sticky Paws, which is a very strong double sided. This one. So I will be linking to their shop below. So really do have a little rummage around their shop. They do have some brilliant uh, products. So it is their tape is what I use all the time. And I'm just going to centralize this onto my spine. Now, if you like the look of this album, just keep an eye on my channel and keep an eye on the Cool Cats um, Facebook page as well. Because this might be a little sneak peek at something that's coming up. And then, as I said, I've got my four pages here. So normally now I would do my album cover first, set it aside and then make my pages. So that would give this plenty of time to um, dry. But for now, I'm going to go straight in. So you would leave it. I'm not going to. I'm going to bring it closer to the camera for you to see. This is the back um, hinge. So we've got a half inch with the tape on it. You've got that little quarter of an inch space and then a three eighth of an inch gap then between the pages. So all that was done just with those tools. I didn't have to think what the measurements were. It's all been measured precisely for me. So what we're gonna do now is slide our page onto this which is the best way for it is black on black up until that first score line not touching it just before it so i'm going to expose the sticky and i'm going to bring page seven and eight here we are here's page seven i'm going to put some tape on this this will give me a couple of seconds just to Put it in place if it was just the tape it would just grab and if it wasn't quite right i'd be stuck and then i'm also going to put some glue on the back otherwise everything um you put in might just fall out so you want to seal your pocket so here is my pocket page so i've got my hands inside i'm going to slide it over so this is where taking those little corner notches out has helped me because it gives me a way to slide it on rather than battling those straight lines so i can still see my score line here and i'm just going to place it down so because i'm just short of the score line it means my page will now flip if I went over that score line, I would, of course, mean it doesn't fold. So that is how I attach my pages. So we've got three more to go. So exactly the same. So I'm going to take off the tape. Add some glue, just to give me some wiggle time and some on the back to seal the page. So we've done seven and eight. So now we need five and six so six is there five is here and i'm going to slide it on so i've oh, got my hand in there to open up the page and i'm sliding it just up to that score line there we go. so we've got two pages now which flip We've got that flexible hinge, which means your page lies flat. If you haven't got that second score line, that flexi, what tends to happen is they sort of stay up like this. But that flex hinge makes everything um, just drop. And then you can either just carry on here or you can start on number one, this side, which I tend to do. One and two on this side.
You just have to remember what order you're putting your pages in. So I'm just putting my hand inside and I'm going to slide it on. go and then so that's page two so i've got page three here and four and if you're wondering what's on these pages don't worry there is a tutorial in the making i'm just waiting uh, for my thumb to be a bit better after breaking it so that i can grip and hold because at the moment I don't have much dexterity in my thumb so we're going to slide number three and four on and just short of that score line and there we go Top back on the glue before it dries and there I have my album all assembled all the pages are nice and evenly spaced as you can see there all have that little flexi hinge I didn't need to remember any measurements I just had to know the size of my page to cut the height of the spine and these tools told me and did everything else for me so if you like these three eighths of an inch hinge stack guides there are other um guides so there, i know there's a quarter of an inch one as well uh, i think there might be a half inch one so there's a range of hinge stack guides but there's also loads and loads of other useful tools which work along with your scoreboards and um, also a lot of dies as well um, some mitre corner tools which i keep attached on this one hinge spacers loads and loads of fantastic generic use tools which means they'll go with all your projects so that is my guide to the cool cats stacked hinge guides so if you would like to get your hands on these tools of course you can go straight to their website but i will add a link below and also head over to their youtube channel for a few more tutorials and things and also so you can see what's coming up with this album so thank you for watching and if there's any other tools you'd like me to show you how to use just let me know in the comments below. So thank you for watching and I'll see you all again soon.